hello everyone in this lecture we are going to start with our second example or our second type of special reinforced concrete structure which is our beam ledge so when it comes to our beam ledge the design of my beam ledge is very similar to that of a corbel however there uh, are a couple of minor differences which we will talk about so when I talk about a beam ledge basically my beam ledge is uh, it can be a pre-stressed it's a, re, a pre-stressed reinforced concrete structure and its main function is to support pre-cast uh, uh, concrete structures such as hollow core slabs and um, pre-cast concrete uh, pre-cast beams so if we look at this image here we can see that we have our beam or our beam ledge this here is what we call uh, call our ledge and you can see that this here is a space that is created to support my hollow core slab or my precast beam that is going to be placed in this location so now when we want to design for our beam ledge just like what we did with our corbel there are several failure criteria that we need to take into consideration when we design for our uh, beam ledge so let's go over them one by one so if we look here the first four criteria are similar to my corbel one we have our shear plane so we said before you have a shear force that is being transferred or, or that is being applied and this shear force has to be transferred from my uh, ledge to my beam or to my column uh, and in order to do that we have to add shear reinforcement to ensure the safe transfer of my shear force now second we have our tension tile which again was due to my VU times A this VU times A creates a moment which results in tension top compression bottom we need to resist this tension and in order to do that we need tension reinforcement in addition to the direct tension that is being applied by my NUC due to temperature conditions that creates restraints on my beam uh, which will create direct tension so we need to make sure that we reinforce our uh, beam ledge just like my corbel against this tension that is being applied now third we have our compression strut. Our compression strut is uh, due to the reaction of my concrete on the shear force that is being applied. Now this reaction might cause my concrete to uh, break. Now we do not want that to happen so what we do is we depend on my F'C or my beam ledge thickness try to increase it in order to avoid compression strut. And fourth which is the final type of uh, failure condition that is similar to our corbels is my localized bearing and we said that here along this location we might have a uh, failure uh, due to my shear force and in order to avoid that we either we either add uh, an angled steel or a steel angle here or we add a reinforcement uh, along the corner now the fifth type which is separation so when I'm talking about separation okay what I mean is when when I have a shear force that is applied what's going to happen is that this area here is going to try to separate from this area So I'm going to basically have two parts, which is this part, this part, let's just, this part here, and this part here. So I have part one and part two, which is being separated so we do not want that to happen so we add a reinforcement to prevent that from happening now my final type is punching shear now to better understand punching shear let's go to this image here now this image represents my punching shear uh, along every red 
dot here I have a VU that is being applied now we can see here that my VU caused a portion of my ledge to be removed and this is what we call a punching shear and we need to make sure that this does not happen so we need to accommodate for that and reinforce against punching shear so these are basically the six modes of failure that we have when we talk about uh, our beam ledge so shear plane tension tie compression strut localized bearing separation and punching shear and we have to reinforce against all of them now when it comes to the reinforcement of my beam ledge let's look at this image and this image represents the reinforcement that is exec that is executed on site so this is the reinforcement that we usually go for it looks like this when we are designing for a beam ledge now we are going to go uh, and talk about the reinforcement of each and every shear play uh, shear failure or a failure condition one by one so we are going to start with my first failure condition which is shear so we said that um, we require shear reinforcement in order to maintain or to ensure the safe transfer of my shear force from my beam or from my ledge to my beam or to my column um, from my beam to uh, from my ledge to my beam so in order to maintain the safe transfer of this shear force we need shear reinforcement and we said our shear reinforcement is basically a stirrup with two legs or with four legs so this stirrup here its main function is to resist the shear force however here we want to add another functionality for this stirrup so we said before that due to VU times A I'm going to have tension at top and compression at bottom and we require tension reinforcement in order to resist this tension force in addition to the TU that is being applied we would require tension reinforcement because this T, uh, this NU, and you see, uh, is resulting in direct tension that we need to take into consideration. So what we will do here is we are going to design this stirrup to resist one, my shear forces, and two, the tension that is being applied by my VU times A as well as by my NUC. So this syrup is going to resist a combined effect of my tension and my shear and this is uh, one main difference that we have between my corbel and my beam ledge so this way we can make our execution or we can execute our reinforcement in a much easier manner so now instead the way that I'm going to distribute my reinforcement is going to be along this direction here this is going to be a syrup. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, along the length of my ledge. So if you look at this image here, we are looking at this side and we have a reinforcement placed here. One, two, three, four, and we're going this way like this. So this is when it comes to my shear syrups now a second type of uh, reinforcement that we have we said that due to VU to make sure that my VU is being transferred to my column we place a steel hanger here just like this to make sure that my tension is being transferred safely to my column now in this can in this uh, in our case we are not going to place this steel hanger instead we are going to place a stirrup however now this is the first stirrup that we placed that we talked about now this one we just talked about it now this stirrup we need to take into consideration that this leg here, this right leg, 
is also going to resist the combined effects of shear and the VU times a tension that is being applied, the tension that is being transferred from here to here, we need to take that into consideration. So when we are calculating or when we are designing for this leg specifically, we need to make sure because this is a critical leg that is also resisting a combined effect of shear that is applied along this plane and uh, and tension. So if you want to look at the different types of reinforcements that we have, let's open this image here. Okay, so this image tells our story in a better way. So we can see that we have our primary reinforcement, which is the reinforcement we said our stirrups that we mentioned, our first reinforcement. We said we have our hanger reinforcement, which are these reinforcements, the ones we talked about where we need to consider the leg, uh, the design of my leg to make sure it handles the combined effects. And we have my beam stirrups. So my beam stirrups, if you can notice, they are placed in between. So here I have a steel plate and here I have a steel plate. Now these beam stirrups are placed in between the steel plates to take into consideration any other type of loads that are being applied along this di direction here because there are no loads. So in case there was any type of load, we, ca we uh, put these beam stirrups here. And finally, we have our minimum reinforcement, which is here to make sure that uh, my concrete is distributed the right way where, uh, when we are pouring concrete. So what we have is we have our primary reinforcement, our hanger reinforcement, and minimum reinforcement and beam stirrups in between. These are the main reinforcements that we are going to have. And of course, inside a beam, just like when we design for any beam, we are going to have flexure reinforcement, which are the reinforcement in red here. So now we have covered the different types of failures that we have and the different types of reinforcement that we are going to use. So now we can move on to our software in order to design for our beam latch. So I'll see you in our next video.